I like to use a color that is light, but not too light, darker, but not too dark. <laughs> it's got to be just right. So actually, the color that I like to start with is yellow ochre. But remember, it doesn't really matter what color you guys start with. It's totally fine if you're comfortable with something else for skin tone. I tend to like something that's more of an earthy color. But again, that's totally up to you guys. So what I'm going to do to get started is I just want to lightly map out the large shape of the image. So getting in the larger features of the head. And I am going to include some of the clothing because the clothing is actually a pretty important part of this portrait. Like if you take away the clothing, it's not really the same portrait that we are looking at here. I think if I try to show the separation between the green and the pink, that's probably pretty important. Figuring out the contour of that magenta color. Wow, that's an incredible magenta color. And this photo that we are drawing from is by a very famous photographer. His name is Stephen Curry. And he's known for doing these very striking portraits of people in all different countries. So if you guys wanna look at some of his stuff, I did put the links in the video description below. You don't wanna get too dark because if you get too dark too fast, it makes it really hard to make changes later on. If you start light, it's easy to draw over things that maybe you don't like so much, you feel like you made a mistake or something. It's a lot easier to deal with because at this stage, it's so light. It's very easy for me to go over this if that's what I would like. Let's get into some more of the facial features. For example, he has a really prominent brow. And then I like to get in the nose pretty soon because otherwise it's hard to locate the other things. I like the nose because it's a nice starting point. You can start in the middle of the face and then pull your way out. And I'm not gonna do the eyes just yet, but I'm gonna indicate the cheekbones, which are really like this cheekbone on the left, super dramatic. And he's got a lot of facial hair. So I'm not gonna draw individual hairs right now, but I am gonna block in the basic mass for where that is going. And then there's this like very dark negative space in here. I wanna make sure that I spend enough time giving that space to breathe. And then for the green, cloth that's going across the hair. I'm going to just show this one stroke, couple strokes going over to make sure that I leave enough space for that. Let me move this down so you guys can see. Actually, that's good. That gives me a little bit more space to get in. Hmm. Let me see. I guess this comes down and sort of loops upwards like that. Little bit of shape down here where there's like a crease. That's a pretty important crease. I don't want to let it go like that. Okay, let's move back up to the face. And that gives me the opportunity to get a little more specific with the lines and the eyes. I like to start with the upper lid. I feel like that's a lot easier to do, but he's got pretty dramatic I guess bags under his eyes. Although, you know, I think I made that a little bit too low. So let's raise that up. Maybe let's put the eyes up here. That happens a lot, you guys, where you put it down once and you think, oh, that's totally fine, right? <laughs> and then you look at it again and you're like, uh-uh, that's uh, not looking so hot. Ah, oh, crap. You know what? I did not give him enough forehead. <laughs> so let's move that up. What I do sometimes just briefly with my finger, actually, I could probably use this kneaded eraser. It's not going to erase things, but it's going to tone it down a little bit. And maybe just that makes it a little bit easier. So let's move. Yeah, like I got to move this green turban thing. I don't know if it's a turban. It's like a piece of cloth that's wrapped around his head. And then if I have to move 
Like if that's the bottom of, of the green, this has to come up a lot more. So, okay, actually, yeah, sheesh, I did not do a good job of that. Okay, there we go. But you know what, you guys, when you're drawing, you gotta make changes. That's part of the process and it's fine. It doesn't mean you're not as good of an artist. It just means that you need to take some time, figure it out. And that's now gonna give me the opportunity to start to block in some of the larger shapes. Although, you know what? I'm now seeing that the nose could come over a little bit. Stuff like that is helpful in the beginning if you can just make those quick changes early on. It makes things a lot easier to do as opposed to wait until the last minute, which is not so fun. I think now what I should do is start to block in some of the colors. So this is like a super bright magenta. And I'm thinking what I can do is break this pastel on purpose. And this is nice because now I can draw with the side of it. So if I take this, this gives me a great opportunity to just throw in big pockets of color. Still not gonna press down that hard because in the beginning, you don't really know. So you don't wanna completely make a commitment early on. So I'm not gonna get too, too dark right away, but I do wanna get the color really in there and nicely established. Okay, like there are all these highlights that you can see in the clothing, but I'm not gonna bother with that right now because all I'm trying to do is just lay in these larger areas of color. So if I move that up, that lets you guys see that better. And I guess the photo crops a little bit, but I think this will give me more of an opportunity. Like up here, it's a little rounder. I feel like I still made that a little bit small, but that's okay. I mean, you guys can keep making changes to what is going on like this. Okay, let's take a look and get this in here. Now what I wanna do is get in some of that lime green, which is really, really bright. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> okay. I love putting in these crazy colors because a lot of the times you don't get to use these crazy colors, especially if you're doing a portrait. So much of it is these earthy tones so when you get this like really dramatic green color, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> like you don't usually get to do colors like that, but definitely today I have that opportunity. So let's just, let's just have fun with this. See what's going on like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, the colors are not even close to where I want them to be, but that's fine. You have to start somewhere. And actually I can already see that maybe the shape could be a little bit better like that, it's a little bit closer. So th this is something that's ongoing. You just keep making little tweaks. That cheekbone is weird. Crap, I did not do a good job on that cheekbone. You know what I might do? I think let's go back in and maybe block in, maybe like a burnt sienna, which is a little bit too light, but at the very least, it's gonna help me resolve some of the issues with the face. So I'm just gonna do a quick pass like this, because what I'm noticing is that the forehead comes out a lot more to the left. This cheekbone comes out a little bit less. So what I did right here is I just gave him a little bit more of a forehead because he needs a forehead. <laughs> and just gonna quickly block in a lot of these areas. And then I'm gonna jump pretty quickly into the white because actually a lot of his face has bright white highlights like this. A quick pass of the white. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna break this in half. And this gives me the opportunity to use the side of it so like, especially his forehead is like mega bright. Especially, actually I should do the brow first because I feel like the brow has like really intense highlights and then maybe a little bit less in here. Ooh, <laughs> that's just not, it looks like he's got like white paint on his face. That's not good. Okay, we'll make that look better. Eventually it will get better, I promise. <laughs> 
I'm just quickly blocking in this stuff. Like this is very dramatic coming down. And I guess, no, there's not a lot of white there. So I'm not going to do that. Maybe here. Yeah. And then the, hmm, the facial hair is tricky because we do see a lot of individual hairs. What I'm going to do first, I'm just going to block in like a white shape. And then later on, I can add more textures to see if that works out a little bit better. And actually down here at the bottom beard is pretty white. Like there's this huge patch of white that comes in. So I'm going to get that in a little bit more dramatically. Okay, still looks wonky. That's all right. <laughs> I, can, I can deal. <laughs> the other thing that I think is important to do as well is to think about working from light to dark. If you guys get too dark too soon, it can be a problem. So actually with my drawings, what I tend to do is I oftentimes do the dark colors last. So black is like the last color that I end up doing. Okay, really briefly, just because the highlight on the clothing, it's like so dramatic. At the very least, I just wanna put in this one down here towards the bottom because this one's pretty strong. And at the very least, it'll just give me a little more direction because otherwise the clothing starts to get very hard to control. And then like up here, there's like a very bright color. Yeah, like this whole upper second, this probably needs like a whole pass of pink eventually. But for now, let's just leave it at white. And then I guess this is not really, hmm. Let's see if just adding in more magenta, just layering it up, that makes it feel a little bit better. And down here too, let's just push down a little harder just so there's a little bit more definition. You can build it up really heavily in some areas. Maybe there's other spots you don't wanna do that so much. And I think a good alternative to black is actually this like dark purple because it's dark and it's gonna give you contrast, but it's not so dark that it just like wipes everything out, okay? So what I'm gonna do for this, I gotta go in and like re-emphasize these like hardcore eyebrows. Sky's got really intense eyebrows. <laughs> so let's get in here. Very briefly outline the eyes. I mean, Steve McCurry, who's a photographer, he's the guy that shot these photos. He's known for these like very penetrating eyes. Definitely see that in this portrait. So I wanna capture that as best as I can. All right, that looks really wonky. That's okay, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, and in this case, I do wanna put in some whites of the eyes because they're so bright in this portrait. Like if you don't put them in, it just looks strange. I mean, they're gonna look bad for a little while, but that's okay. Whoa, that looks terrible. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get there, I promise. It's not gonna look horrible forever. <laughs> and actually he does have these like, I guess these are a little bit bluish. So I think I'm gonna put in a couple of highlights in the pupils. I probably will need to go back in later with some white, but for now, let's just leave it like that. There, that's pretty good. And then maybe some of this like peachy tone. And if this had like, see this highlight here, it's like bright, but it's not white. So I don't want this area to be too much, but I do wanna start pressing harder, giving it a little bit more pressure because in the beginning you don't wanna do that. In the beginning you wanna be lighter, you wanna be looser. Right now I'm not gonna do that so much. What I am gonna do though is get in some blue because actually there's a lot of blue here. I know that sounds strange, but there really is. Like you wouldn't think there's blue and flush tone, but there definitely is. And actually I sort of feel like it's more purpley. I think I'm making it a little bit too blue. So I'm gonna use some of this purple to rub some of that in. Maybe that will help me. I believe we need to really pump up this, like we gotta make this like white because <laughs> this is crazy high contrast here. 
And even on the nose, oh dear, dude, I'm sorry. Your nose is not looking great in my portrait right now. I promise I work on it. Sometimes I feel like when I'm doing a portrait, I'm just like <laughs> apologizing to my subject. I'm like, sorry, I'm sorry you look so weird. <laughs> Actually, he's got these great wrinkles that come down. So if we go up like this, yeah, that gives him a little bit more of the intensity that I think he deserves. And let's get this so it meets up to the green, just like that. That's a okay beginning. We're not done yet for sure. Maybe I'll use just a little touch of black, not a lot. Again, use your black in moderation, but especially like here on the lip, I sort of can't get away with that staying so wonky looking. So I'm just gonna get in and articulate some of those areas and maybe a little more cheekbone on that side. And actually he's got this crease here. These creases are really important. Like a lot of people don't realize how dramatic they can be. And actually in here, maybe like a little touch of purple. Guys, I have not used oil pastels in a really long time. I really think it's been like, Sheesh, it might even be high school, which is crazy because uh, let's just say I'm, I'm not 16 anymore. <laughs> Bad, but I do think I'm missing, maybe it's this, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes you're working on the drawing and, and things seem so clear. Other times it's like, what, what am I doing? And I'm trying to look more carefully because I definitely feel like there's more structure in this beard than I am doing. And so I'm trying to squint and look really carefully at what's going on so I can start to subdivide. Yeah, that gives him a little more structure. Okay, he looks a little bit less wonky. <laughs> And if I start to block in some of the burnt sienna, maybe that'll help. Yeah, I'm picking at this a little bit, but you know what? I can't let his facial hair <laughs> go all strange like this. Actually, there's a little bit of magenta in there. Isn't that weird? Is that magenta? Okay, if you really squint, maybe there's a little bit coming through that way. I think I'm making him look too mean. He looks, I mean, he's intense, but I don't think he looks mean. And I feel like I made him look mean. So let me see if I can fix that up a little bit. And I think the lower eyelid and the bags that are under the eyes, these are pretty important areas. Like a lot of people, I think they have trouble drawing eyes, but one of the reasons is because they don't draw what's around the eye. They just draw the pupil. And that's kind of it. I think that you got to do more than that. I think that's not quite enough. Okay. And I'm seeing this like really intense red around the side of the cheekbone. That's probably too much red. It's probably way more than I should be doing. But you know what? I'd rather have the drawing turn out to be way too dramatic. And I can always kick it back. Like that's not a problem. So it's actually, in my opinion, better to have a drawing that's a little bit more over the top than one that is not doing anything. Like you, you don't want your drawing to be boring. I'm gonna give him a little more of this brow. Like he's got these great wrinkles. I actually think people who have no wrinkles are harder to draw. <laughs> so I actually like drawing people that are older. They just, there's more to draw. Like there, there's more landmarks. It's just easier for that reason. So I'm having fun. This is really cool. Getting there. He looks really pasty though. And oh my God, the colors are like, they're not accurate <laughs> on the screen. I mean, that's, that's to be expected. You can't get like hyper crazy good quality when you're streaming. That's just fact of life. Unfortunately, not much you can do about that. Maybe someday in the future. That would be really cool. If you could get like, DSLR quality camera for live streaming, that'd be awesome. But as far as I know, that does not exist right now. So yeah. Purple here. I mean, there's always like somebody in the chat who's like, oh, there's an app. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like if there was, I think 
everybody would be using it. Like that's probably what would be happening. Let me just block in some of this red. And I also think if you guys start to introduce a new color, the key to making that work is you got to put it everywhere. Because oftentimes people, they just put the red in like one spot and they're like, why does it look so weird? I'm like, because you didn't put enough of it. It's got to be in more than one place. Otherwise, it's really not going to mesh with the rest of the composition. Okay, I think I gotta really bulk up the green here. Cause actually this green, it's like a little bit transparent. There's a lot of oil pastels that are like that. It's like, you can't help it, that they're just transparent. So what I'm gonna do actually, maybe I'll just use black here because I do need more contrast. Maybe like, especially underneath the cloth here, I need to show that separation really clearly. Oh crap, that just, that just totally broke. That happens all the time though. That's cool. Sometimes people get so, they're like, oh my God, I broke. I'm like, what do you expect? <laughs> like, it's an oil pestle. It's crumbling weird. Of course it's going to break. Plus, what's the big fuss? If it breaks, you just draw with it. <laughs> it's like not a big deal. Like, guys, it's not the apocalypse. Okay. It's fine. It's just an oil pastel. Okay. A lot more shadows there. Maybe I just want to like, separate the shapes because they're definitely way too mushy right now. Yeah, the this drapery is like more than half the portrait. I feel like most of the portrait is drapery. <laughs> like actually a lot of it is not the guy. The guy only takes up like a small portion of what we're looking at. It's the stupid cheekbone again. I think that's like mega sticking out too much. There's always like one part of the drawing that drives you crazy. I think that's a little bit better. Let's move this across. I have discovered, apparently people like watching tutorials where you're not amazing and perfect. I don't know, I think it's more like down to earth or something. Sometimes like you watch tutorials and people are like too good at what they're doing and it's sort of frustrating because then you sort of feel like, oh man, I'm never gonna be able to do that and it's hard. Yeah, he needs bigger eyebrows. Let's, let's really pull him out. Yeah, you know, I said all that stuff about wait till the last bit to do the black, but his eyebrows are just so intense. Like, I don't know that I could leave it for the last minute without like avoiding a lot of the contrast stuff, which is pretty important here. Squinting, checking it out. This is necessary. Actually, if I was not streaming live, I'd be doing that a lot more. Because what I like to do sometimes, I'll take the drawing I'm gonna put it like on the other side of the room where I like totally cannot see it very well. And I'll step back and I'll see what it looks like from that point of view. Because oftentimes like you just, I don't know, it's like your drawing looks really, really different from a distance compared to what happens when you're super up close. Like oftentimes when you're that close, a lot of the times you just can't see it. Like it's really hard to see your progress. And so when you step back, you get that like physical distance. It's a really, really big difference. And he really needs, wow, that, that red is intense. Oh man, I don't even think I have an oil pastel that's gonna like remotely match this red. Like there's just kind of no chance. <laughs> I feel like phthalo blue is kind of like that. It's like you either have phthalo blue or you don't. You can't like mix it. It's a color that's so crazy intense. It's just very hard. To handle sometimes. See, this is that point where you just start getting a little stumped about things. Like in the beginning of a drawing, I almost feel like that's easier because it's really obvious what needs to be. I look, okay, he has no hair. Nose is missing. It's like not difficult. But the thing is, once you start getting to this point, like you start asking yourself, like, okay, I know it's not done, but I'm not totally sure exactly what needs to happen to actually get it done. And that's, I don't know, I call it the plateau. A lot of people have different names for it, but it's just sort of this point where you start to level off a little bit and it's fine. It's just, it's frustrating because you, you feel like you're not really making a lot of progress, but you are, you know, the more you continue to work on it, the more you'll start to see those results. I just think a lot of it's like faith and patience. Like you have to have faith that you actually are capable <laughs> of something that doesn't look horrible. <laughs> Although I will tell you guys, 
Got to make bad drawings if you want to make good ones. The, the not going to happen on its own. You, you guys want everything to look amazing? Uh-uh. It's not going to work that way. And that's not because of you. That's just the artistic process. That's just the way things go. This is a very reddish pinkish area, but I'm adding this like orangey red. So sometimes colors that you think are not going to match are actually really good to start. And then you can layer them. You can shift them and change them a little bit. So that is of big help. Helped me a lot is when I was in art school, I had this crayon technique that I learned from this professor. And it was a really hard technique because he made you use these like obnoxious colors, like these super saturated, bright colors, like colors that I don't really like that much. But it really, really helped me a lot because I started using wacky colors that I normally don't use. And I got a lot better. And I, I felt like a lot of my portraits look like rainbow portraits, but I don't know. Sometimes those rainbow portraits can really be a big help. So I think just like trying some portraits that have like out there colors, like colors that you're like, ugh, that looks terrible. But it's like, try it anyway. You just try it and see what happens. You got to experiment because if you guys just keep drawing with the same colors over and over again, it's not good. Like one thing that I recently did for painting, most of the time, the blue that I prefer to use for like a dark blue, most of the time I really like using ultramarine blue. That's, that's my go-to blue that I'm using all the time. Recently, I had, actually it was one of my students, they said, they're like, oh, I really like Prussian blue. It's, it's such a beautiful color. And I was like, oh, I've never used Prussian blue before. So actually what I did the last time I did some painting, I actually put away my French ultramarine, which was crazy to me at the time because I never do that. Like most of the time I just am in love with French ultramarine, but I put that away and then it like totally changed my palette. I was like really, really excited about it. So yeah, sometimes it's like you just switch out a color, like take out a color that you normally use a lot. Like a color I use a lot, I love using burnt sienna. That's like my go-to color. So if like one day I take away the burnt sienna, I don't use it, it will force me to try to use other colors. So sometimes just giving yourself colors that maybe feel weird and strange to you, sometimes it's a really good experience. I need more blue up here. This is not happening. And by the way, <laughs> colors are wrong on the screen. They're really, really wrong. So yeah, all this blue that you guys are seeing on the screen, it's all purple. It's way, way darker. So I'll show you guys in Discord. I'll post it later. You can see like, whoa, that's the same drawing. Oh my God. Okay, let's like start to really press down because this is a cool photo. I love this photo. This guy is on Instagram. He has something insane, like 5 million followers. He's really, really famous. But yeah, check out his stuff. I mean, his stuff is, it's everywhere. It's on like the cover of National Geographic and he's won like all these awards and his stuff is just extremely well known. Mostly he's known, I, I'm sure you guys have seen this portrait. I can't remember the name of it, but it's that girl who has like a wrap around her head and she has these like really dramatic eyes. They're, they're so, so dramatic. So I, I'm sure you guys have seen that portrait before. I can post it for you guys later in the Discord if you want to see, because it's a really striking image. Okay, what I'm going to do now is maybe get into some of the facial hair. So actually what I want to do for that, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to work it from the black angle and also from the white angle as well. So let's get in and maybe start to block in more texture and shape because this facial hair is doing way more than I have at the moment. A little bit more motion, a little more texture. Texture is hard. And down here, ooh, he's got this like big clump of hair that goes this way. Okay, so let's build up brighter layers of the facial hair. Like it, it's pretty dense here, comes out on the side. And I'm pressing hard, you guys. With oil pastel, you, you have to play with the pressure, okay? Like don't try to make it all smooth. Sometimes that looks a little strange. 
I did do a little smudging here with my finger and that can be very helpful, but you don't want to over smudge because sometimes things just end up looking really, really strange. Let's get a little more of this shadow in here. Yeah, this, this is going to take a lot of layering to get this clothing. And I'm trying to use the side more because I feel like I'm not doing that enough. And maybe there's like this little crinkle that comes down. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Ooh, sort of like that. Because <laughs> some people, they get very frustrated if they feel like, oh no, that was a really bad drawing session. I feel like I got worse. I don't think there's any such thing as that. I know a lot of people, you can feel that way because you're like, oh, I don't like the drawing. Oh, I could have done this better. And yeah, I mean, you're going to have drawing sessions like that. That's totally natural, but don't like punish yourself just because things didn't turn out the way you want them to. I mean, things rarely turn out the way I want them to. So, Okay, so see here, I wanna show a little more separation between that back cloth and this cloth up here. And maybe what I'll do is show you guys a little bit of the blending techniques because I think I'm sort of ready. Let me just add a little bit more pastel. Yeah, actually, I think I need more than that. I feel like that's way more substantial. And then it sort of drops off. Uh, let's just solidify the cloth. I don't know. It's like I want to work on the hair, but I, I mean the face, but I feel like the cloth is like so important that I sort of can't skip over it. It's hard, I think, to work this without acknowledging the importance going on there. I know some people, and maybe you're one of these people who are like really, really good at drawing with their finger and are doing these like amazing, I'm like, oh my God, how are you doing this? Like without a stylus or an Apple pencil? I mean, I have an Apple pencil and I love it, but I can't imagine doing that with my finger. Like that's very challenging. Although I don't know, maybe it's cool. Maybe you can control things in a different way. You know, I think it just depends on the effects. I feel like for coloring, it's probably totally fine, but maybe for the finer pen work, maybe that's a little bit more challenging. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Procreate. Procreate is like magic. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so inexpensive compared to Photoshop, which usually you need a, a subscription to get that. Although hopefully you guys can get that through your school because that really should be something that, you know, student rates and stuff like that. This is baby oil. And if you just open it up and just get like a little tiny bit of it on your finger, you don't want that much, a lot, Little goes a long way. And so now you guys can see, like if I want to blend this out, that is so much better on my fingers because it slides around. I can do the same thing up here if I want to pull this up or like maybe down here at the bottom, maybe I can just smooth this out like that. That's a really nice thing because I know a lot of people, they just use their fingers and then it's like you smudge so much that your fingers go like raw. I'm going to really start to go to town on this cloth. All right, I think I need I need more blue. The blue, like, to, I had all this blue up here and then I feel like I drew over it or something. I don't know, a lot of drawing is like that. It's like, you put it down, you gotta put it back. I don't know, this orange, I was hoping that this orange was gonna help me, but it's a little bit too transparent. Like, it's, it's hard to put it down and not have it disappear. But let's see if I can get it to enhance some of these browns. I feel like this brown is a little bit boring. The eyes are not good. It's hard to get detail though with oil pastels. It's one thing that I find really hard about them. It's just getting the detail that you're looking for. Like, oh my God, this eye is way too big. Let's just bring that down a little bit and maybe a little rounder on this side. I don't know. I guess that's a little bit better. I still feel like they're a little bit big. I feel like in general, that's something that I just do. I just always make them too big. I guess it makes sense. I mean, eyes are, a lot of people consider eyes to just be so important in a portrait. Like if you mess up the eyes, it's like, it almost doesn't matter what you do with the rest of the piece. It's, it's like, if you mess up the eyes, like the whole thing is like off. So that can be very tricky, but it's important to address all those things. These highlights, 
And I'm gonna use gray so it's not so similar to the white. I will, maybe I'll smear them a little bit. Like you can use, this is like one of those clay tools I was talking about. Like you can actually go in and just like scrape away an area if you don't like it very much. So it's nice for things like that. And you can also take it and like push it. I mean, it really is like sculpting the surface. I mean, you really use it like a palette knife. There's like pink back here behind that area. And actually to the left of his facial hair as well. And maybe even here, it's like a little smudged in. Cause I definitely feel like, I don't know, this got like really white and pink. I'm not so sure. I mean, I know it's pink, but this is like not intense enough. I want it to be more dramatic than that. Okay. And then maybe articulate some of that edge. Oh God, his nose is so weird. Come on. Maybe, I guess it's just like really dark. And then this like very, very intense shadow. I mean, highlight is not helping me right now. <laughs> I keep forgetting about the lower lid. So let's get in there really carefully. Just dot those in way too wide. Let's get back in there. Oh my God, so much of art is like you put it down, you take it away, put it down, take it away. Yeah, and then if I increase the highlight up here, I don't know, I feel like this portrait is just like taken over by the pink. Like the pink is so dominant. It's almost like hard to see his face in that context. 